I love the smooth roll of the thread pulling through the fabric, each stitch bringing me closer to freedom. Thanks be to Adam's dead wife, Mary, for leaving me this. She died in childbirth, or so Adam tells me, and for all his faults, I've no grounds to think him a liar. The sewing lay unfinished, like the half-formed baby they buried beside her in St Andrews. Old Adam gifts me the thread after I do such good work darning his nasty socks. Oh gosh, but I've dived straight into the middle of all this, just like I do my sewings, not laying out the outline like I should. I've never been clever at words like Bess, but I've always been quick with my hands, so I sew like I talk a mile a minute. It was little Bess what taught me how pictures can tell stories too, like the old glass at St Andrews. From here, you can just see that old tower across the fields, them four pointy bits. Bess warned me not to come. She'd had a bad feeling about it, but my and me can't afford to heed bad feelings. Not since the war took our brother John. Six shillings a week, plus board and lodging, to keep house for old Adam at Allwell. It was too good an offer to pass. We worked well enough at first. Sundays off for church and to visit man Bess. But when flew at the village, Adam said best for me to stay away. Kept me inside the farmhouse so I didn't meet no one and risk infection. Even locked my boots up in the grain store. He's lost two women in his life already. He can't bear it lose a third, he says. Well, he'd been good to me, so I went along with it. Two weeks pass. No word from man Bess, so I ask, is it safe for me to visit yet? No, but he promises to write them and gets a farman to deliver the note. I should have learned to read and write proper. Two months gone. My boots are still locked up. Once a week he reads a note from Bess and writes back with my wages and some new excuse as to why I can't come. They can't afford to question him. He's not a bad man. Just a bit touched since he lost his wife. But I have to get out of here because he's getting worse. He's not trying to touch me in my room. I sleep in the unused nursery where he don't ever come. Still, I lock the door each night and keep the key here. Now he sits too close when we break bread in the kitchen and his hand lingers on my knee longer than his proper. Adam's old, but still strong. Too strong for me to overpower him. His eyes are still clear and hard and blue as air bells. I tried signalling the farmans, but they're none too bright. They thought my rag waving was flirting. <laughs> With harvest done, they're laid off till spring. And it's just me and him with the long winter together. So, I'm sewing my way out. Oftentimes, a kite flies so low over the farm I can see the red stripe of its wing from my window. Adam's got no time for beauty, but when I mention the bird, he says, Birds is like beasts is like bushes, all of a piece. And I realise he's colour blind. So I find a thread the colour of fire like my locks. Spit on the end. And thread it. Push a sharp end through the linen. I've an hour after my duties before the light's completely gone. I daren't ask for a candle. It must be done before school closes or Bess will not see it till New Year. And I'm scared to wait that long. Adam's taken to calling me Mary. When I correct him, he gets cross and smashes something. Nights now I hear him turning the handle of my locked door. He ain't asked about the key yet, but it's only a matter of time. So I sew in a frenzy. Finishing the epic thing Mary must have started during her confinement. All fairy tales. Snow White on her beer and Sleeping Beauty too. Rapunzel up a tower and Little Red in the wolf's belly. Was Mary touched too? So in all those trapped women. Women waiting for their prince. Well, princes round here are in short supply, so Bess will have to do. <laughs> With flame thread, I sew Rapunzel and Little Red, and unpicking the stitches at their feet, I re-sew them shoeless. I sew a spare pair of boots by the woodcutter, giving him the flame red air that Bess is also blessed with. <sighs> 
showing Adam the finished work my hands shake with nerves. But you don't notice the flame-netted girl threaded through it. Bess will. I hope. Even though it were once Mary's, he can't have cared so much about it. So I ask him to gift it to the school, to brighten their room, and help get the kiddies keen on stories and reading. He takes the bait, I think it's the kiddies bit, and takes it down Popple's Lane to Mel's next day. And that was Thursday. School closed Friday, but my work Saturdays, so... Well, today's the first day they'd be free. Assuming Bess understood and managed to convince Ma. I'm sewing something new while I wait. Something for Bess, if I ever... Well, it's good to keep my hands busy. We're only seven fields from Mel's. Even without boots, I could walk it. If it weren't for the dogs. Three. Fierce as wolves. I tried taming them with supper scraps, but they still bristle at my approach. If I were brave, like John, I'd try it. But I'm scared. Scared of the dogs ripping into my flesh. Falling face first on hard earth, bleeding to death before anybody finds you. Is that how you felt, John? Falling in the fields of France? He used to say the village was a prison. He was first to join up in 14. But from here it seems like a haven. What's that? Oh, it's... It's man and dead John, tramping across the fields, waving my old red shawl like a flag. I bugger it. I'm not dreaming then. Wait. That's... That's Bess. It's Ma and Bess. Yeah, she's wearing John's old coat. And that's John's old rabbiting gun in her arms. A pair of boots slung over her shoulder like a brace of pheasant. Oh, oh she's only ten and she's done the buttons up all wrong, but she's come. She's come. My prince has come. Mm -hmm.